Here we go. More scrap. It's like free beer money. See you later, free beer money scrap barrels. Oh, look at this gold mine. Ronnie's gonna be into money. Oh, here's 50 bucks right here. Oh, another 50 bucks. Look at that. 20 bucks a piece all day, baby. Oh, what we got over here? Oh, look at that. That's like brand new. Same with this one. Oh, perfect. I'll be able to get full list for these. Oh, we got the John Deere right here. I don't think so for that. Maybe a little bit of the Toro. Uh, no, not today. Let's go with Ronnie's favorite. 24 karat, baby. Oh, look at that. That looks like brand new. Oh, beautiful. Ow! Tell, you around right here? Can I help you with something? Yeah, is Daryl around? I'm looking for a starter. You don't want to deal with that guy. He's nothing but a scammer and a hack. I got what you need. Brand new. And I'll even cut you a deal because I like that jacket. How's $50 sound? This is a nice jacket. This is a $500 jacket when I bought it brand new. I'll, I'll take you up on that. Perfect. Almost got it tight. <sighs> 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 For good luck. All right. This thing doesn't work at all. You sold me a faulty starter. Great. Now I gotta go get my money back. Hey, where you at, bud? Oh, crap. That guy's probably back for a refund. Come on, buddy. Where you hiding at? Brownie. Right around. Time for me to get out of here. Pterodactyl here. Today's how-to video is going to be on this here 1969 Sears Custom XL with the Tecumish engine on it. Now, the problem we're going to address is going to be the carburetor. Now this one does run. This is Elkskin's mower, by the way. Elkskin's came up with the idea for this video. This doesn't have the original Tecumish Carver Trader on it, but this is what the original Tecumish Carver Trader looked like. And the problem with this Carver Trader is, whenever you would remove that center nozzle in here, this center nozzle, you would have to replace it with a service nozzle. Now, I tried to find a service bulletin on it, but I couldn't find it to find out what the exact details are. But I remember back in the day when I worked at Farrell Shop, if you took this nozzle out, cleaned it, and put it back in, this carburetor wouldn't work right. They had a service nozzle. So I had to do something with the lining up or alignment of these holes in the nozzle. And of course, if uh, you've done that, and you can't get the carburetor to work right after that, and you can't get that service nozzle because they probably don't make it anymore and you can't find it, the carburetor is basically junk. So what Elskin said is, there's guys online that are taking this K-series carburetor that you can buy aftermarket off the inner screen, and you can retrofit this carburetor to this Tecumish engine. And another thing, these old uh, Tecumish carburetors also had that fuel pump that was mounted to it. Oop, and there it goes. And I remember one time I tried to eliminate this on one of these, even though the gas tank was higher, gravity fed, I tried, I thought, well, you don't need that stupid fuel pump. The gas tank's higher. Well, it wouldn't work without the fuel pump. You gotta have the fuel pump for some reason. So you can see Elkskins did my, my Terrell retrofit fuel pump. 
because that's another problem. You need parts for this fuel pump, you're not going to find them. And the nice thing about this carburetor is the existing air cleaner horn and gasket that you get in the kit will mount right on there. The holes and everything line up. So all that will work by using this K-Series carburetor. And you can tell this isn't the original because it's got a manual choke on it. But Elkskin said there's no video on this on this uh, carburetor swap, but some guys have done it. The only, only concern I see is we're going to have to rig up some kind of choke cable to make this work. But other than that, it should be able to go right on. So, uh... Let's get started. Let's get this taken off and see if we can get that mounted. I got the carburetor off. We got to get this off. This stud, I'm going to have to get break that nut loose and put the stud back in. But this isn't the original carburetor. Like I said, the original one looked more like this. So these studs that were in this Tacomish engine, they're not long enough, so I'm going to make some studs. And the best thing to use are these type of screws which you can get at the hardware store. These round head screws because they're threaded all the way. And we're going to cut the head off so we can make a stud long enough to go through here. and into the block. We'll screw that in. So it stops. And then we can put this up there. And then, you know, we're gonna put a nut on there and then we'll just mark it and cut it. All right, we got our studs made. I'm gonna put a little red Loctite on them. That's up to you if you wanna do that or not, but I'm going to. And another thing, you may want to chase these out with a tap just to make sure that those holes are free and clear. Kind of figure out how far I want to go. You want at least a couple threads, you know, passed, and then you got to allow for the gasket too. Now they give you a couple of gaskets with it. They're kind of thin and flimsy. So I went and got me a regular Tecumish gasket. 
And that's part number is 27915. Oh yeah, that'll work. Now let's hook up our link. Now, this link is kind of heavy. So it looks like we're gonna have to drill out the hole on this one. Because where's the original? Carbitrator at. So we'll we'll open up this hole back here. So I'm gonna take a drill bit and find a drill bit that fits in there snug and then drill this out. 764 drill bit is what you need. I'm gonna go ahead and put this fuel fitting in that they supplied with it, but I'm gonna put some Teflon tape on there first. And whenever you use Teflon tape, you could always start a thread or two back from the end, because you don't want that tape to get in there. And I believe we're gonna want this pointing straight down. So I'm gonna tighten it up until it's pointing down. All right, let's hook up our, our link. Now I went and found some quarter 20 nuts that were like the original quarter 28 with the washer on it. Or you can use just regular quarter 20 with a lock washer if you have to. You have to get them started first. Just like on the crawler. Okay, looks like our throttle's working. Go ahead and hook up our fuel line. Elkskins has got this thing like a little too, he should have, should have mounted this fuel pump somehow. Elk skins. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. It don't need to be that long. Once we put the new cable in, we gotta route it. Now this is the old bracket. It looks like it was for the choke cable, which probably worked a different way. And if we come over here with this bracket, it's gonna work the opposite. When you pull on it, it would be open and when you push on it, it'd be closed. So we need to come up from down here somewhere. So I'm thinking we could probably take this bracket and use this hole here. So let's take this out. And that fits. because the cable is going to be real tight up against here. It's going to run like this throttle cable. We're going to have to come up this way. Maybe we can put that through here like this. That way we can bring it, yeah, that looks better. And then we can tighten it from out here. And then we'll just follow the same path, since the choke is next to the throttle, we'll just follow the same path that that cable takes. And we'll come up through here and we'll have to come way up here to grab this so we can open and close it. 
But I guess we could start it until then and see if this thing works. We put the air cleaner and that on. We get it all done. Let's see. Let's see if this thing works. Oh. Give it a little throttle. Little blade man throttle. one turn. Throttle it up again. mower. So from Oregon, I buy this universal eight foot long choke cable that I could cut the length and I could use it on just about anything. And that's part number 60-122. Cause we gotta rig up a choke now for this thing. So it's pretty simple. You just pull this out all together. And we'll take off the nut and the washer. Put the nut washer and lock washer back on. I'm pretty sure it went through this part here in the frame. good. I got to have enough wire to pull back through so we'll cut it right about there. That's why you got to have the inner wire out. Now we can feed the inner wire in.
So make sure it's all the way in, and then we're gonna cut it way back here, and we're gonna trim it again. We just wanna get that excess off so we can route it up in here. Let's see, we don't wanna be rubbing on any hoses or nothing. So figure, you wanna go a little bit past, cause we can adjust, and we wanna go in this hole, so let's just go like right up here. Now we can cut it. And this is where our Z-Bender comes in. We sell this in our online store for those of you that don't know about this. And how this works is you stick it in there and you bend it at a 90. We're gonna wanna bend it back like that. Then you give it a spin and bend it up. There's your Z-Bend. Z-Bend, Z-Bend! Now we can take that and go right in here. Guess I should have went a little longer. There we go. All right, now we can secure our clamp. So now we're in the open position, the knob's all the way in. So now when we pull on the knob, it's gonna pull it down. We may have to trim a little bit more off if it hangs up. We'll see in a second. Looky there, looky there, we got choking! Woo! Now Elkskins is gonna to have to do something with all this. Because we don't want that rubbing on there. But he'll take care of that. Probably turn that back. But yeah, he's got too much going on with this hose and all this stuff. He's gonna have to tidy that up. But that's good, now that works. Now we put the air cleaner back on. I thought it came with a new gasket, but I guess not. And these holes on the side actually help to support this air cleaner bracket over here. See? So you're gonna have to tap these and then you could use them over. So what I'll probably end up having to do for elk skins is weld some flat washers on there and then put some screws in there to help help fix that up. I'll check with him first, because he may want to do it. Oh. Looks like the screws from his other carburetor are a little big. So we're going to have to get some smaller screws. All right, these are four millimeter. Because this is some, you know, aftermarket foreign. And another thing, don't go too long with your screws, because these holes go right to the choke shaft. So if you go with a long screw, you're gonna run into the choke shaft and your choke ain't gonna open and close. So remember that. So you gotta have the right length screw. The only ones I had were these hollow head or Allen head four millimeter metric screws. So if you put this on and your choke don't work and you're whoop whoop. Why don't the choke work? Because your screws are too long, knucklehead. Yeah, see?
that choke plate may be hanging up on this a little bit. We may have to loosen this up. find that sweet spot so it doesn't interfere. The choke plate now is interfering, not the length of the screw. There we go. Well, maybe not. That's the best you can do since you can't support it down here. I'm going to try to bend this Z-bend over a little bit. It'd be nice if you had a bracket up here. You might even have to make a bracket that comes off of here to kind of support this. But the stuff you run into when you're retrofitting. Just don't pull on the choke too hard. That's what it is. I bet you any money that's what it is. I bet you it's that aftermarket choke plate is probably running into the body of the carburetor. I bet you this here the top of it back here, probably sticking, yeah. Sticking on the bottom, sticking up there. So you might have to take this plate out and file it a little bit. Might have a little burr on it. your choke is hanging up. That's a quality control issue. If you've got an old Kroller carburetor you're using, you may not have that issue. Just don't pull on a choke so hard. You'll know when you did, because it'll sound like the choke's on when you're trying to run it. All right, well, that's all there is to retrofit in a K-Series carburetor to this old Sears Custom Model XL Super Custom 69, whatever Elkskin said this thing was. And there's your dinner. Woo! Retrofitting Carpet Trader! Also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. And go to our web store. Buy some of those products. Get a Z-Bender. Get some gel lube. Get some other stuff on there. And I'll say it again. There's your dinner. Some people say I yell too much. Huh? Woo! Woo! Why are you yelling? Woo! Woo! Turn the volume down. Woo! Oh yeah. I've been looking for that Ronnie to get my money back. Ever since that new starter he sold me isn't any good. What new starter are you talking about? He doesn't stock new parts. This one right here. He just sold it to me about an hour ago. Brand new part, not even working. Faulty. Wait a minute. That looks like that old junk starter I just threw in a scrap barrel a couple hours ago. Looks like that Ronnie just spray painted it gold and resold it as new. Are you sure? This thing looks brand new. Look at it. You can't even tell that somebody spray painted that old starter gold. Look at your fingers. It's got gold paint on it. He didn't even let the thing dry after he painted it. Oh, I, I, I guess you're right. 
That run! What a scumbag! Hey, tell you what, next time you run into him, can you give me a call? Alright, Ed. But you know, he's kind of hard to find. He's scummy, slippery. But I'll call you if I run into him. <laughs> Oh, hey, Ronnie. What are you looking for? I was wearing this hat, and the wind blew it off my head over into this general vicinity, and I was looking for it, but I didn't see it, so I'll just be on my way now. You wouldn't happen to be stealing my old junk parts, spray painting them and selling them as new, would you? No, of course not. That'd be uh, some real shady stuff for someone to do that kind of thing. Had a customer just show up with a brand new starter. Said he bought it from you. And it looked like you had spray painted it gold. Me? What? No way. He's lying. I don't even know how to use spray paint. And I'm allergic to gold. Really? Then what is this? Uh, oh, that's, that's not mine. I, I'm just holding it for a friend. Liar! We both know you don't have any friends. And I think you've been stealing from my scrap barrel. Haven't you learned your lesson from before? Well, let me remind you. No, no, no. Oh, 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 oh.